Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. In 1864, the Hammond brothers, having established Connecticut Arms Manufacturing, obtained a patent for a novel single-shot pistol and immediately put it into production. To his Derringer, I would submit to you that it is not. It's about eight inches long and four inches high. It's not a tiny gun. Now, this was offered in calibers 22 rimfire, 32 rimfire, 44 Henry, and 50 rimfire. And um, it's a stout, simple, reliable, single action pistol. And it was offered in 44 Henry because it was felt it would make a good companion piece to the Henry rifle. Um, these were produced with barrels in the, about this long, although they did have a 12 inch target model and made even longer barrel models fitted to a rifle stock. The long arms were not popular. As near as we can guess from the scampy, infor scampy information available and from the number of pistols I see for sale, the 44 Henry version was pretty popular, the others somewhat less so. Um, despite their success with the 44 caliber pistol and perhaps their lack of success with the long arms, um, they went out of business in 1868. But these are not hard to find, so they must have produced quite a few of them. Uh, the obvious question is, do they see service in the Civil War? And the answer is, who knows? I have seen a picture of a Union soldier holding one of these, a photograph. But we don't know if that photograph was taken during the war or after it, so we still don't know. Anyway, it's an interesting gun in a lot of respects, so let's go to the tabletop and have a look. So even though it's a single shot, the Hammond Bulldog is neither a small nor a light gun. It's all steel construction, excepting the grips, of course, which I'm not certain they could be wood, they could be horn. I don't know. I can't tell. And um, they have the flat checkering, typical of the mid-19th century, which is pretty decent for gripping. So let's unload and show clear. What you do by bringing the gun to the safety notch, pressing down on the very screw-looking sight, and rotating the breech block to the left. The breech block not doesn't just go to the left, it retracts backwards as well, which is probably what actuates the extractor. The trigger is a sheathed tight, as you can see, with some nice checkering on it. And it does not pop out much when you cock the hammer, but just enough. And the trigger pull is actually quite nice. It's very short, crisp, and not at all heavy. Um, there are sights, as you can see, which, again, typical for the period, you can only actually see the sights when the hammer's cocked, and they are terrible. But, you know, fixed barrel gun, you could probably achieve fair accuracy with this once you were used to the sights. And, um, Let's talk about the ammunition for a minute. So the ammunition, 44 Henry, pardon me while I fumble. The ammunition is a rimfire cartridge and it has not been made for many decades. It was originally loaded with either a 200 or 216 grain bullet over 26 to 28 grains of black powder. And, um, from a rifle, this gave you 1125, 1150 feet per second, and almost 600 foot-pounds of energy, which was pretty good for a repeating rifle of the era. Now, since the ammunition is unavailable, the collector who loaned me this lovely gun has these special cartridges. And what you do is you insert a 22 caliber blank, and then when you load the gun, you make sure the blank is top dead center so that it's struck by the firing pin. 
with the 22 caliber blank in place, you can put in some black powder and stuff in a ball or something. Now, the owner told me, oh yeah, he thinks it takes just a 44 caliber ball. So I grabbed a 44 caliber ball and discovered it does not fit. There's a reason for that. This is a 44 caliber ball for a cap and ball revolver. And because everybody lies about their caliber, it's actually 45 caliber. So it does not fit in the case and it cannot be chambered. So I thought, all right, measure it. Yeah, it's neck of the case is 440. So it's genuinely 44 caliber, which means a 440 diameter ball will not fit in it. When I researched a little more, I discovered that they used a heel base bullet. Now, in a couple hours, I could have cobbled up a way to produce a 0 .440 heel base bullet, but I didn't because that's a lot of work for a one-off. So instead, what I did was I took the cartridges loaded with 22 caliber blanks, threw in a charge of 30 grains of black powder and capped it with some bullet lube wax. And that produced a very satisfactory boom and very authentic cloud of white smoke, which let's face it, that's all we really need for this video. And uh, <laughs> interestingly, one of the wax plugs put a hole in a five gallon plastic bucket that I was nominally aiming at. Um, <laughs> So I wouldn't recommend it for theatrical use in that context. And these are a little longer because the, uh, the Henry shell was 0.903 inches. And this one is a hair over one inch, but they chamber and they work. So it doesn't really matter, but it is kind of a neat solution. And this is frequently applied also to 32 rimfire cartridges which also have not been made in a very long time. So, neat old gun, very solidly made. And uh, I quite like it. The Hammond Bulldog did have a modest popularity. They feature in a number of pictures from the era I've seen. And they show up very regularly on sites like Gunbroker, and um, you can pick one up for manageable money, if you wish, and uh, it's just fun and, and kind of interesting. We Again, we don't know how many they made, and we have no clue how many the rifles they made, but I suspect very few because I've never seen one offered for sale. So, anyway, special thanks to the collector who allowed me to use this gun for the video and provided the cartridges to attempt to make ammo and fire it. If you like the video, please click like, consider subscribing, and if you wish to support my efforts here, there's a link to Patreon in the description. In the meantime, I hope this finds you well, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.